So uh, for the long time, we've been trying to uh, better uh, tailor the treatment according to patients' true risk. And, and as I mentioned, uh, even within those categorizations, uh, there is uh, considerable heterogeneity. And so uh, I was at the ASTRO meeting a few years ago when Dr. Spratt uh, first presented the data that you showed. And I took a screen grab and, and uh, when I returned to the, to the office, I, I looked at those six uh, uh, categories and asked myself, how would I treat each of the patients in those categories differently? And, and that's where uh, we go in the next slide. You see, I, I kind of came up with a decision tree based on those risk categorizations. So patients who have uh, low risk disease uh, and uh, NCCN low risk and a decipher low risk, uh, if you sum those numbers together, you get zero, obviously. They're very low. Um, uh, and uh, what I was thinking is that those patients should best be managed by active surveillance. But if uh, they were unwilling to consider a surveillance, uh, we would offer them uh, radiation therapy in the form of either uh, external beam treatment or brachytherapy, monotherapy. Likewise, the patients who have um, uh, low risk disease and uh, an intermediate risk uh, to cipher score, we would give them uh, monotherapy, uh, either a radiation loan or brachytherapy. But again, many of those are also candidates for active surveillance. But when we get into that challenging group of the intermediate risk uh, uh, cases with either favorable intermediate or unfavorable intermediate, that's when uh, we're all challenged to ask ourselves, when is the uh, appropriate use of hormone therapy? And I thought the uh, scores that uh, uh, Dr. Spratt uh, put forward would be helpful. And so uh, we continue to offer uh, monotherapy for those patients who have that sum score of two, favorable and intermediate risk. But when they have unfavorable and intermediate risk, uh, we consider a short course of engine deprivation therapy, four to six months. And of course, men with high-risk disease, uh, today we still offer them a long-term engine deprivation. And for the very high risk, uh, I, I uh, encourage, of course, all patients to consider clinical trial. But for those patients with the very high risk, uh, we were at the time exploring adjuvant therapies like chemotherapy or some of the new novel anti-angine therapy drugs. So going to the next slide. So I have four case presentations that help uh, uh, describe how we've been using this uh, decision tree in our, in our clinical practice. So we have a man who's 70 years old. His PSA was 4.76 uh, at diagnosis. He had two lesions on an MRI scan, one of them uh, with a PIRADS-5 suggesting extraprostatic extension and a second lesion showing uh, a PIRADS-4. He had uh, eight of 12 cores positive, and the Gleason grade group was three or three plus four, as we uh, previously knew. So this man has unfavorable intermediate risk disease uh, by virtue of having uh, the high number of cores positive, and of course, that worrisome uh, MRI. So our question was, you know, is this patient someone that we would recommend a short course, or could we consider, should we consider a longer course of hormone therapy? So next slide. So we sent his uh, uh, biopsy tissue for decipher testing and returned with a value of 0 0.61, just uh, nudged into that high-risk group. According to the uh, uh, decipher test, he has a 32% risk of higher grade disease at prostatectomy, 10% risk of metastases in five years, and an 8% risk of can prostate cancer death within 10 years. And so uh, going to the next slide, uh, we see that these patients with unfavorable intermediate uh, risk disease may have a risk of metastasis that approaches uh, 50%. Uh, so this uh, assumes information from both the clinical uh, data, the PSA, Gleason score, and clinical stage, as well as the decipher. Uh, so next slide. So for this gentleman, um, we looked at, uh, uh, click the next uh, slide. Uh, he had uh, unfavorable risk disease uh, by uh, clinical features because more than 50% of the cores were positive and the high risk uh, decipher uh, score. And so we felt that um, he would best be treated with a long course of hormone therapy. And this is uh, the uh, clinical trial, the RTOG 9202 from Dr. Jerry Hanks, 
uh, uh, showing that patients with long-term end and deprivation therapy uh, have better uh, survival than those patients treated with a short course of hormone therapy. So next slide. So uh, there you see our, our recommendation for this gentleman. I want to thank you, Dr. Mahalski, for your time and presentation and thank the attendees for, for joining. Thank you, Ryan. It's been my pleasure and they were great questions. I appreciate the participation. Mm -hmm.